episode of Outside the Rack is brought to you by Kinetic Performance, the makers of the Gym Aware. In today's world of strength and conditioning, data collections become the utmost of importance, and that's exactly where Gym Aware separates itself from the competition. Because when we're sitting there and looking to collect data, what data are you actually collecting? And are the numbers you're looking at fitting into the exercises that you're utilizing? And even more so, are they going to answer the questions that you're looking for? Looking at different ways that you are moving the barbell through peak and mean, both velocity and power, is really what separates gym aware from the competition. Being able to understand what your ballistic exercises are doing separate to what your strength exercises are doing really allows you to program at a much more specific level for your athletes. So hop on over to kinetic.com.au to see what Evan and his team have in store for you today. The world of strength and conditioning is filled with some fantastic practitioners that are always searching for more. But more what? What are strength and conditioning coaches searching for to better their ability to prepare their athletes? Well, what about cutting edge information or a place where you can find different opinions from forward thinking coaches on what you're doing, how you're doing, and try to get feedback to be better for your athletes? Or what about a place where you'll find like-minded coaches that can provide solid coaching advice and career development for you as you progress through your career as a strength and conditioning professional? Well, this is exactly why we built the Strength Coach Network. You'll have access to exclusive monthly content on top of the sensationally active forum that we have where you can communicate with coaches all over the world to find those answers that you're looking for to help you be a better practitioner for your athletes. So make sure you hop on over to strengthcoachnetwork.com slash CVASPS, that's strengthcoachnetwork.com slash CVASPS, and get your 48-hour trial for only a dollar. I look forward to seeing you in the Strength Coach Network. <clears throat> What's up, everybody, and welcome to the 41st episode of Outside the Rack, brought to you by Kinetic Performance, the makers of Gym Aware. In this show, we're just going to try to dive a little deeper into some of the top minds, the top practitioners of the world of sport performance just to learn a little bit more about who they actually are and how they got to where they are today. Today, we are joined by the University of Denver's Associate Director of Sport Performance, Gary Burrows. Gary, thanks for being with us today, bud. Jay, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, man. Well, listen, before we get rolling too far, man, who is Gary? Yeah, yeah. So so basically, my, my journey into this path um, started back in uh, Minnesota, where I was born and raised. Um, went to undergrad at the University of Minnesota and did my first internship under the University of Minnesota. And, and for that, that experience for me was, was very eye-opening, you know, getting a chance to see how a, a Power 5 university, you know, operates from the sport performance side and, and being able to work with the multiple, uh, multiple to, uh, teams across the board uh, was good, a great experience for me. And then from there, the doors just kept opening up. My network just kept growing. Um, after that experience, I was a graduate assistant at St. Cloud State University, um, assisting with football, which was the big sport, and then having uh, some teams of my own, swimming and diving on the men's and women's side, and then softball. And then that door led me to um, becoming the director of strength and conditioning at Bemidji State University, um, working with all 16 teams, so a pretty daunting task, but you know, I wouldn't have traded that experience for anything. And again, my, my network led me to getting a job at the University of Denver, and I've been here for four years. And again, I wouldn't trade this experience for anything. <clears throat> yeah, man, and a dude who's, who's been able to really see like each of the levels and from a different angle, right? Like the St. Yes. Cloud was the GA mm -hmm. and then the director, and now yep. back to working under Matt, which is yes. awesome. Yes. And you've had yes. some some really sensational people to work with. So I'm excited to hear about this one. Yeah. Could yeah. you share with us a learning situation that brought about an epiphany in your career? So for for me with with that moment was really when I started at my first year at the University of Denver. And for me, having having four teams at the University of Denver, so women's soccer in the fall men's women's basketball in the wintertime and women's lacrosse in the spring, it provided me the opportunity to be out at practice and to see what the demands of sport actually are 
on a much deeper perspective, if you will. And so that moment for me was looking at how they how they move, you know, in their respective practice. And this was in the fall when I was watching soccer. And I was really thinking about what I was doing with them in the weight room and how they were actually moving on the field in their given demands. And it dawned on me of, is the ratio of what I'm doing in the weight room higher than what the movement mechanical perspective, agility, change of direction, speed mechanics, is that ratio off? So basically, was I focusing too much on the weight room side of things compared to getting them prepared for their sport? And then through various talks with the coaches, the soccer coaches during that same time, it's like, you know, at the end of the day, we're trying to put the ball in the net. And it dawned on me right there that I got to rethink my model. I have to rethink of how I train these athletes and actually bring up, you know, the time that we're developing into, you know, change of direction, speed mechanics, think that first and think weight room second. Now I'm not, again, trying to deprioritize the weight room because obviously we know there's extreme value there, but also just getting them prepared for the demands of their sport, you know, moving in, in different planes of motion. For me, that was the aha moment. You know, that's something, too, you're going to hear more and more from people talking about. And I think that that's something that coaches who have had kind of that enlightening moment, if you may, mm -hmm. are, are maybe going to be able to have a little bit more, is success the word I want to use right now, or a little bit more traction with what they're trying to do in this unique period of training we're in now. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so even taking a look at, you know, the training protocol right now where we are so limited, it's, it's okay. It's how can we bring up, you know, starting from a foundational level, you know, starting with, you know, extensive training, moving to more intensive work along the way, whyether it's, you know, speed mechanics, you know, apply metrics, um, landing mechanics, whatever the case may be. It's, it's again, it's preparing those athletes because again, when they come back with, you know, especially soccer, you know, for example, with my soccer team, when they come back, they need to be in a state where they're, they're ready to, to handle the demands of practice. And so right now that's, that's kind of another, you know, silver lining for me is, is being able to work on that while we have this time when they are away from sport. <clears throat> no, man, I appreciate that. I think that's, I think that's some big time stuff. Now, again, like a guy who's been bounced around and, and, and moved around and seen it from a bunch of different angles. This, this is really intriguing mm -hmm. to me, bro. If you could sure. ask one question and you know that you would get the answer to it, what would mm -hmm. that question be and why? Great question. So with, with what we do in, in our field as being, you know, providing service to our student athletes and just figuring out ways of how they tick, for me, the question I would ask what would be is every time I have a new student athlete enter my weight room, know, how do I know how that athlete ticks? How do they learn? Are they learning more through communication and feedback? Are they learning more through seeing demonstration? Um, because if I can enhance the way that they learn, I feel that I can take their potential to a much higher level at an expedited rate, if you will. So for me, that would be the, that would be the million dollar question. <clears throat> yeah, no, I, I really, that's one that I haven't thought of. And I don't think that that's one that's been brought up yet. And I think that that's really interesting to me because, you know, so many people like to talk about connecting and communicating and this and that, but really that question would expedite that entire process. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so it, it's, it's, building that relationship with that student athlete. It's, it's like I said, understanding how they tick. Yes. It's, it's understanding, you know, how much experience that they have in the weight room, but, but what really motivates them at the end of the day, you know, are, are, you know, do they, do they like the high energy stuff or are they an athlete where you got to kind of put your arm around them a little bit and explain things in a little bit further detail. And so I just think that, that for, for me knowing that answer instantaneously would be really a, a, a big staple in, in how I train my athletes. <clears throat> nah, man, I dig it. I think that's awesome. But, you know, there's a guy who's been a director, mm -hmm. worked at super high-level hockey, and mm -hmm. is now, you know, working with two basketball teams. So there's like, mm -hmm. that's a lot of time, a lot of work, and a lot of the quote-unquote grind, if we may. Sure. But what's Gary's escape? 
Uh, another great question, because again, as, as uh, you know, in this field, it doesn't happen much, but, but it's important to learn that, you know, work-life balance. Um, for me, being blessed with being in a fantastic state of Colorado, where the weather is unbelievable, you know, just to go on a side, a uh, little soapbox here last week, um, I think it was on Thursday, we got about six to eight inches of snow and two days later, it was completely gone. And so for, for us and for me being able to get outside and enjoy the beautiful weather. I mean, there's so much to do in Colorado. So for me, it would be just even something as simple as going for a walk, going for a hike, um, enjoying the outdoors, whether it's, it's, you know, fishing and camping in Colorado. That for me is a great way to escape, recharge my batteries, and just to refocus um, at the end of the day with what I'm trying to get across from my uh, professional goals and also the goals I have for my student athletes. So again, that would be, that would be the biggest escape that I have for me right now. <clears throat> yeah, man, that's you guys are kind of spoiled with all that stuff out there. <laughs> and I think too, like one thing that's overlooked in this whole story, and why that's probably even better, is people are like, "Wait a minute, he said it snowed last week," and it's like, "Well, dude, he's from Minnesota. Like snowing and it going away in a day, that's <clears throat> like awesome because it's yeah. not two degrees with just." ice wind coming in off the lake and just cutting mm -hmm. right through, you know, through you freezing all day. So yeah, yes. like I bet, I bet that for a Minnesota boy, the, the climate you have down there is, is sensational. Oh, just, just growing up in Minnesota and then, you know, being able to, you know, working up in Bemidji where you talk about the lake effect. And like you said, that wind is hollering at you and, and dude, you're, you're running from the weight room to your car trying just, you know, not to, not to freeze. And again, yeah, we are spoiled because I'd never seen anything like it. You know, snow in Minnesota sticks around for months. And here in Denver, it may be a few days. You know, sometimes it's a little bit longer. We have it for about a week or two, but we're spoiled. Like you said, it, it's gone in two days. And, you know, like today, the sun is shining. It's, it's you know, 60, 65 degrees. It's a bluebird day, if you will. And so why not take advantage of, of everything this state has to offer? Yeah, <clears throat> dude. Yeah, I love it, brother. <laughs> Yeah. Gary, it's great to see you, man. So glad you're doing well, brother. It's always great to catch up and appreciate your time. I appreciate everything. Thank you so much for having me be a part of this. Yeah, mm -hmm. brother. Thanks. We'll be in touch. Sounds good. Thanks. Mm -hmm.